Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he gets old, he will not turn from it. Amen. Look at what it says in this one. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. They will not turn from it. Look, look at this here, okay? Let's pray first. Father God, your word is, is already a command. It's a blessing unto our lives. It's life itself. Help us to understand, to pay attention, to understand. Give us understanding, Father. And also, Father, give us the boldness, the courage, Father, to share it with others, Father, that we experience it first, Father. That the miracle be done in us and for us to be obedient to it. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, look, no, no, look at this. We have to pay attention to this. A start means, or train means, it starts with you and me as a parent. This is a command where God is saying, look, uh, if you train up a child, if you bring him, up, bring him up in my teachings, I will make sure that they will never depart from it. Now, when I was little, my, my mom, she took me from the hand. She took me wherever uh, she needed to go or, or we wanted to go, and she would not let me because she knew that if she let me go, I, I would walk somewhere else or, or something else, some, some, somewhere else. So I would go wherever she, she took me. You know, she knew the way. And this is what God is saying. He knows the way. And he says, I am the way. And when he says, I am the way, it means the Bible. And when he says, I am the way, it means you and me. We are the way. That we are supposed to be teaching people to, to walk on the way, meaning walk with Christ. Don't walk on your own opinion. Don't walk on your own thoughts. Don't walk uh, according to what people say. Walk. We are supposed to be the one. Be teaching the people to walk right with Christ. Walk right with God. And some of us take them somewhere, they'll take the day off. You know, it's okay, you deserve it. Oh, you know, let's go to the park. Oh, let's go here. Let's go to the ball game. Let, let, you know, we have so many ideas. And we do so many things. And you know why we do that? Because we don't know God. Or nobody taught us. Or we just, we just be in rebellion. We take, we take God like it's, it's, it's okay with God. You know, it's okay. It is not okay. If the Bible says one thing, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's not about what I think. It's not what you think. It's what the Bible says. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Look, if you bring him up in me, I will make sure. I will take care of him. I will provide for him. I will lead him other way. But what do we teach our children? You know, they see us. We don't go to church. They see us. They hear us when we talk. And we think it's so innocent. It's okay, you know, they're not paying attention. Well, let me tell you what's happening. We are opening a door for evil spirits to come in. Worldly spirits, the Bible calls them. And, and, and we say, well, we're, not in, we, we're not even thinking on that, but, you know, we are in a spiritual world now. As Christians, we live a spiritual world now. We, we are, we're, against, you know, we're not against flesh and blood anymore. We're, we're, we're fighting uh, a spirit, uh, people that we don't even see, uh, things that we don't even see. We can't see. And they speak to us in our thoughts, in our mind, and, 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 and we find, oh, it makes sense. It's, it's, yeah, it's okay. I'm not going to do nothing bad anyway. And if we don't pay attention to this, we see ch our children grow, and, and they don't follow the, the way of God. Why? Because we didn't teach them. We are supposed to be teaching them by, a, by being a role model, by example. The fear of God is supposed to start with the parents. It's supposed to start with us. And then we complain, well, the friends change them. Well, you know, those people they're hanging around with the Bible says it's us, and you're going to hear it through here. It starts with us. It was our fault. God does not blame the friends. God does not blame anybody. God, you know, blames the parents. And we're going to see that today. In the scripture we were reading, look, look at what it says in the scripture we were reading right here. You know, in verse, in verse 2. Then the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel, and when they joined battle... Israel was defeated by the, by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. They got into battle one day and come to each other. It says 4,000 men of Israel died. Where was God? And then they thought they could bring God in, you know, and, and uh, the ark, and they can bring him in, and, and they were going to be invincible. Well, that's not what happened. Because according to verse 4, it says... So the people said to Shiloh that they might bring 
From there, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who dwells between the cherubim and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Who was taking care of the covenant? Two people living in sin. No power. You know? And then verse 5. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that earth shook. So much joy in the church. So much joy. Oh, wow. That's a nice church. Oh, man. That's really good. But God is not there. But God is not there. They're praising God in their own way and not according to the Bible. They are praising God or praising themselves. Praising more of the music and all those, but not God. It's supposed to be reverence, honoring God in every service, in everything we do. God's promise to our children, you know, he said he will take care of them. If we help, if we do all the natural, he will do the supernatural. Start the children off in the way they should go, and even when they get are old, they will never, never depart from it. Life starts with us, meaning the Bible, God's word, it's life. And it starts with us, the preachers, the teachers, the ministers, before it is preached or taught. It starts with us. If I'm not, if I'm not living the word of God, then I don't believe it. I just have knowledge, but I don't know God. You know, because I keep living my life. I don't live life according to the word. If the word, if I don't apply the life to God's word to my life as I teach it or anybody that teaches it, it's not working then. It's not a life. Verse 33, John 6, 33 says, For the bread of God is the bread that comes from down, comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Look, look at what it says here. It is life. Not only to read it, but to do what it says. Verse 63, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they, have, they are full of the spirit and life. Meaning if we know the Bible, if we have knowledge of the Bible, but we're not obeying it, it's in vain. It's in vain. God is not there. It's only words. Right? It's only like giving you a plate with no food on it. It is God's orders. It's a command to guard our testimony and, to, and teach and educate our children by example. God commanded us to, to guard, you know, to watch our testimony, to be careful with our testimony on everything we do, and it starts at home. And wherever we go, it's supposed to be the same way at work. It's supposed to be the same way maybe, maybe on the trolley or wherever we're traveling, with our friends, anywhere we are, we are supposed to be watching carefully our testimony. But it starts at home. And it starts with our children. Why? Because when God is pleased with the testimony, God is supporting it. God is backing it. If not, it's not happening. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 through 9. These are the commands. Decrease and loss the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So here it says, it's a command. It's a direct order from God. Verse 2, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy life. So he never told us we can slack off. We can do our, our own thing. He says, no, no, you're going to obey from beginning to end. And if you do this, if you obey me, you will have peace. You will have long life. Not only you, but your children. Well, God, what happens if, you know, if I grew up without God, if my children grew up with a, you know, uh, that I messed up with my children, with, you know, my parents didn't know God, so I grew up with no God. I didn't know God until I, I grew up. What happens? If, well, I make it right. I can close the doors then. Be right with God. Be faithful. What happens if my children grew up without God? Well, it's, God, like, like me, what, for example, like me, I said, God, I messed up with my children. What do I do now? He said, you can't do nothing. Then, you mean they're lost? No. I can do something. How? Through your faithfulness. You need to be faithful. 
If you're not faithful, there's nothing I can do for your children. But if you maintain yourself faithful, your prayers I will answer and your children will be okay. Because the Bible clearly says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your whole house will be saved. So he says, you, it starts with us. We believe, we show by example that we are believers of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to be the light and the people are supposed to be seen. They're supposed to see Christ. They're supposed to, they're supposed to see Jesus in us. That as we walk, that as we walk, we are light. As we walk, they can see, they can see, oh, that's a Christian. They're supposed to see Christ in us. We are representing him. Verse 3, hear, o Israel, and be careful to obey that, you, that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord of our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So what he's saying, everything you have, everything belongs to me. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you, go, when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your, of your house, houses and on your gates. So can we see here? When did the Lord say we, we can slack off from his word? Where does he say, he says, it's supposed to be like tattoo in our hearts. It's supposed to be inside of us. Not only in us, but it's supposed to be like a tattoo in our children. It's supposed to be in our, in our home that wherever they turn, they can see God in, in the home. We understand that? That in our home, they, 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 anybody that comes in, they can feel the peace. They can feel the presence of God. And our children are supposed to be feeling safe at home. That they're more, they're more into God than anything else. And the other thing he says here, so they can fear God. Because the beginning of wisdom is the fear for God, meaning honor. That means honor, honoring God. The worldly spirits that influenced Aaron passed on to his sons to do the same sin. It will be the same with us. What happened here? Well, remember Aaron? He built, he made a golden calf for, for Israel, Moses' brother. So now we see here that she's children doing the same thing, offering strange fire or strange uh, uh, worship to God. Doing the same thing. Why? Because Aaron allowed it. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. Aaron sons, Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers put fire in them and added incense. And they offer unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out, out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke of when he said, among those who approach me, I will be proof holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be, be honored. Aaron remained silent. How many of us are offering God something he didn't ask? We worship God our own way, not the way he said, and we're dead spiritually. We just minister because of knowledge, but not, because, not, but not through the Spirit of God, because we are doing it our own way. We have our own agenda. We say when we come to church, when, when we come to church, and, and we do whatever we want, we do it our way, but not according to the Bible. He said, I am the way. And when he said, I am the way, we are the way. We are the way leading the people. We are the way that if I'm following Christ, other people are going to follow Christ. But if I'm not following Christ, if I'm following my own will, people are going to follow their own will. And we want to change the world like that? How can my shadow change? How can my wife change if I'm not leading her the right way? If I'm making excuses for everything? And I want a good marriage? And I want a good family? How? When God says, I am your provider, I'm going to give you everything you need. Seek the kingdom of God first and all his riches. And everything will be added. He has promised everything there. But still, I don't believe him because I don't do what he says. 
try to find my own way to feel better instead of going to God. God, you know, God, you know I have this need. And he said, he will, he will provide it because he, he promised. If he orders something, he will provide for it. But if he didn't order it and you buy it, you're in trouble. We're in trouble. So here he says, you know, whatever we do is going to pass on. But if we do worship God the right way, the way he, he, he commanded, we are shutting the doors for any evil spirit. And the doors only open for God, and he is the one that's going to be guarding the doors. The discipline in, the, in education to our children starts with parents at home. It's not in schools and not in church. It don't start there. But we're so good as parents, some of us, do we are always blaming the teachers or we're blaming this, the, the church for what's happening to our children? No, it's, it's our fault, the Bible says. Clearly. When I was little, when I was going to elementary, I was in uh, first grade, second grade, and if I got in trouble in the school and I got home, I would be in trouble with my mother too. I would be in trouble. I mean, there was support to the teachers from the parents, and there was good teachers too. There was support from the, from the parents through the teachers. Because our parents had gone through worse things, poverty and all, and they wanted us to succeed. They wanted us to be better. So we were going to go to school one way or another. And God, the way God does it, well, if you want everything from me, if you want to have a peaceful life, then it's got to be my way. I've learned that no matter what comes our way, troubles, needs, whatever is coming our way, you know, it's, it, it, or people talking bad about us, the slandering us, slandering us or, or attacks, things like that, you know, it's for our own good. It's for our own good because we're going to grow, we're going to gain experience, and we're going to be better from that. And, so, and if I am convinced that God is in control of my life, that God is in control according to the Bible, of everything, nothing that is happening right now, God does not know about it. He knows about everything, and he's going to do something about it if I allow him. If I depend on him, if I trust him, he's going to do something about it. But if he allowed it to come into my life, it's because he wants to teach me something. And Romans 8, 28 clearly says that no matter what's happening, everything is going to work for, my, for, for their own good of the people that love him. The people that love him, not everybody, but for the people that love him. Clearly. The discipline and education to our children starts with parents at home. It's not in schools or church. First Simon chapter, one, chapter 8, verse 1, 1 through 5. Look at what it says. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons on, as Israel's leaders. The name of, the, of his firstborn was Joel, 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 and the name of his second was Abijah, or Abijah, and they served at Ber Beersheba, but his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after this dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old now, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead, to lead us, such as all the other nations have. Now we see here that Samuel was a, a man of God. He was a prophet of God. He feared God. And he was so busy in ministry that he didn't take time to teach his children according to the Bible. He didn't take time to bring up his children. He, was, he had time for everything else in the church, everything else for the people, but he didn't have time for his children. And they grew up without him. And then when they grew up, he appointed them, right here clearly says, as the Israel leaders. But they were corrupted. And so the people, the people started complaining, said, look, uh, they're not like you. They don't follow God. They're following their own ways or this and they're that. And, and Samuel, and they asked Samuel, Samuel, we don't, want, we don't want them like that. You know, why don't you get us a leader? Because you are, why don't you get us a, a leader, a king? And they got Saul. So sometimes it's our fault that another, a, a, a wrong leader gets chosen because we're not doing our job. We're not doing our job. And see, if we don't pay attention to our, our responsibility before God, I mean, if, you, if I'm going to be the pastor, I have to know what am I going to do? What is my responsibilities? 
And I got to fulfill every one of those before God because it's not with men, it's with God. If you're going to be a minister of music, if you're going to be a, a minister of youth, if you're going to be a minister, a, a Bible teacher, you have, to, you have to put the Bible first and you have to go before God. What are your responsibilities? If you want to be right with God. Or you're just going to take a trip, you're going to find out one day that you were not doing it for God, you were doing it for yourself. And time goes fast. What if God was here today and he says, are you my leader? Are you my teacher? Put your name on it. Yeah. And he gives you all these things. Well, you have six, seven responsibilities. Have you been doing them all? And you're going to be surprised. Oh, no, I've been doing only three. What happened to the other? Well, I didn't know I was doing it. Well, I had too much work. Well, I is that how we're going to answer? Because those excuses are not going to be valid in the day of judgment. There's not going to be no excuses. Why well, I had too much work. Wait a minute. You mean you doubted me that I was your provider? You mean you, doubt, you doubted me when I said, my word said that I was going to provide all of your needs? You mean you doubted my word? Because he looks at it that way. And now what we think that makes sense, well, you know, I need. Yeah, but he said he was going to be our providers, our provider for everything. Not our wants. Rejecting or not obeying God's word will have serious consequences. Our children growing without God. Do you want our children to grow without God? I mean, our children, <laughs> we came to Christ, most of us, as already and our children grew up what do we do now you know we can't help them no but God can through our faithfulness through our faithfulness we say well you know I need you here at 730 that's our service in the morning service oh no I can't get up but that, then you don't ask for for the salvation of your children you don't you, you don't have a you don't have a right to that because you're not willing to obey God well maybe if I come at 11 you know it's okay God is not telling you, Levin. God is saying already the time. No matter what time he told you, you're still going to give excuses. So how can we expect miracles in our life and salvation in our families if we're not willing to go, you know, to let everything aside and, and do what God says? Because we can't, like, we can't lie to God. He knows our hearts. Verse 1. When Samuel grew old, he appointed his sons and Israel's leaders. The name of his first form was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah. And they served at Beersheba, but his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after the sons gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. So all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead. Lead us, such as all, such as all the other nations have. Now when we see here our children growing without God, we see on Hosea 4, chapter 4, verse 6, my people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God, I also will ignore your children. You know what? You've been doing ministry, yes. You've been serving. But you've been serving yourself. You have not been serving me. You've been doing it your way. You have not been doing it. You, you know, you have not been doing it for me. Now, this is going the consequences. Your children are going to grow up without me. They're going to grow up without me. Because right here, it looks, they, we are having trouble because of the lack of knowledge. We don't take time to read the Bible. We are doing our own thing. We don't take time, you know, to, to, not, to examine the Bible and see what God's saying. You know, we're trying to interpret the Bible our own ways, and we're having ministry. We're doing, we're, you know, we're living a Christian life our own way. And so he says here, you know, that we are rejecting his word. You know, we are, having, we are ignoring his word, and the consequences is our children are going to grow without God. And we think we're so holy. Oh, I'm so holy, holy because I'm the, I'm the minister of music. I'm so holy, holy because I'm the pastor. No, you're not. We're not, out of, the, we're not out, of, out of trouble yet. We're in the same boat until we get to heaven. And if you're in the boat, stay on the boat. 
Look at what the Bible says. To me, personally, my wife and my children are very important to me. So I follow God the best I can. And when I have trouble, I said, God, I can't go through this. It's hard. Help me. Help me get through. Help me get through. When I have time making a hard decision, I tell God, show me, God, what to do. And I keep praying. I don't wait for it to see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it later. Maybe, you know, I'll ask him later. No, I, I do it right away. Because later, later on, it's going to be harder. I do it right away. As soon as I know what I'm supposed to do, I start praying to God. God, lead me here. God, show me. And see, it is written down. Help my son because he's been asking for help. He's not doing it on his own. He's, he needs me. That's where we have the Holy Spirit to be our helper. Not to walk blindly in this world. It is God's word and prophecy of the consequences for not teaching, discipline, and teaching our children. See, so it, it, God has prophecy. He's already telling us. He's already telling us the consequences there's going to be if we don't bring up, bring up our children and his ways and his teachings. Not our teachings, his teachings. There's going to be serious consequences. We have to discipline them. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 10 through 14. Look at what it says. The Lord came and stood there calling us at the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At the same time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I will judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about his sons. Blasphemy, God. And he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the, to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by, for by sacrifice or offerings. So he tells, he's telling Samuel, look, I promise Eli that he was going to serve me, him and his house, all the, you know, all the time. Then a descendant was, will come out of him. But, but this, this is what Eli did. His children grew up with no teaching, with no discipline. He allowed them to do everything. He was so busy in the church. He was so busy with everybody else, but he didn't have time for his children. He was not a good role model for his children. He didn't teach them, he didn't teach them to worship me. Not because of that, because he allowed sin. He allowed, he not, they not only sin, but they, he allowed sin in the house of the Lord, in my house, through them. They're going to die. There's the, he promised, the promise is broken. They are not going to serve me anymore. The blessing, the ministry is cut off right there. Do we want to be in those shoes where we are the ones cutting the blessing to go on to our children and to our families? Because we're not living a life that pleases God. Because we're not living a life according to the Bible, aligned with the Bible. We're living our own life according to our thoughts. We're not seeing with the eyes of God that we are cutting the blessings in our family. Look at what it says. Right there, clearly. He told him this is what's going to happen to Eli. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 through 18, to cover sin and no discipline will bring serious consequences to the church and to the innocent people. They will die spiritually. Verse 1. And Samuel's word came to all Israel. Now the Israelites went out to fight against the Philistines. The Israelites camped at Ebenezer and the Philistines at Aphek. The Philistines deployed their forces to meet Israel. And as the battle spread, Israel was defeated by the Philistines who killed about 4,000 men on the battlefield. How many people died because of the sin? 4,000. 4,000. And we keep going. God's people rejoice in God's presence and not knowing there was sin. And by this, God could not help them. I mean, people were saying there was sin there. I mean, the way 
uh, Eli's sons were behaving in the church and, and how, you know, they were blaspheming God. Now, they were there. They were there that day on the, on the battlefield. But look at what happens here now. Verse 3. When the soldiers returned to camp, the elders of Israel asked, Why did the Lord bring defeat on us before the Philistines? Let us bring the ark of the Lord come then from Shiloh so that he may go with us and save us from the hand of our enemies. You know, when things are start going, starting to go wrong, I start blaming my wife. I start blaming my friends. I blame somebody else, but I don't take responsibility. I don't take responsibility. And see, that's, that's, not, that's not pleasing to God. We have to take responsibility. Why is my home falling? Why is my home not working? It's because maybe I allow something in my heart that was not supposed to be there. Maybe I'm not obeying God. Maybe I'm living, I'm living my own life and, and, and I think I'm pleasing God because anyway, I'm going to church. Anyway, I'm doing this. Anyway, I'm doing that. Yeah. Are you? Are you giving God leftovers? Are we giving God leftovers? Or are we doing God things according to God, worshiping him? Because that's what we're doing here. Four. So the people sent men to Shiloh and they brought back the ark of covenant of, of the Lord who is enthroned between the cherubim and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. Look at who's taking care of it. Sin. Sin. And sometimes we have people leaderships. They are living in sin. They are in sin and we allow them, even though we know they are in sin, we still allow them to lead. And they're going to lead us to defeat. Clearly says here, they're going to lead us to defeat. They were not supposed to be taking care of the ark. They were not supposed to be in leadership. And neither in any church, that no one that's not walking right with God is supposed to be leading and have a leadership. Because they'll lead us to defeat. Allowing sin without discipline is like giving the worldly spirits permission to enter and hurt us. That's what happened. They come in and they hurt us. When we have the wrong leadership in front or when we, do, or when we have sin in our lives and we think it's okay, God has forgiven us. Five, when the ark of the Lord covenant came into the camp, all Israel raised such a great shout, the ground shook. Oh, man, you know, just because we see a church that's so excited, great music, is full of people, doesn't mean God is there. It doesn't mean God is there. Because we see it right here. Six, here in the uproar, the Philistines ask, what's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they learned that the ark of the Lord had, had come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid and God has come into the camp. And they said, oh no, nothing like this has happened before. We're doomed. Who will deliver us from the hand of this mighty God's? They are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues. In the wilderness, be strong, Philistines, be men, or you will be sub subject to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. Now, they, they were afraid, but God was not making them afraid. They were afraid naturally, because when God gave them fear, you know, fear came like in the days of Gideon. God defeated the people without, me, without them doing anything. And, and God was supposed to defeat, defeat here without you know, them getting involved, but no, you know, they came against Israel. The, the enemy will come against us. If, 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 we don't, if we don't fear God, if we're not obeying God, the, the enemy has permission to come against us. He's not going to back down. If you don't act any, any wish that will say to us, who are the only ones, who are the only Christians we cannot touch? It says, only those that fear God. Only those faithful ones that are living the life of Christ, you cannot touch those. The sinner's prayers are in vain, and the end is death. Reference John 9.31. Look at what John 9.31 says clearly. God does not listen to sinners, but it clearly says if anyone fears God, you know, and do their will, he will listen to them. John 9.31. Amen? Amen. 
Okay, is there, we know that God has, does not, God does not, no, no, listen to sinners. Meaning if we're not aligned with the word of God, he's not listening to us. He listens, he says, only to who? The godly people, godly man who does his will. He only listens to the people that fear him, the people that are obeying him, he says. He are, he's answering to them, he's helping them. Only the people that obey him, are we obeying him? We, we need to analyze the word of God. Are we obeying him? We want so many uh, benefits from God, but we're not willing to, to do his will. And we say, yeah, I'm going to do what God says. Yeah, I'm willing to do whatever he asks. But when the time comes, we don't. We make excuses. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. It's not how we want to run ministry. The Bible says how we run ministry and how many responsibilities we have. And that's what we're supposed to have. That's also what we're supposed to do if we want to please God. Verse 10. So the Philistines fought, and the Israelites were defeated, and every man fled to his tent. The slaughter was so great, so very great, Israel lost 30,000 foot soldiers. How many they lost the first time? Four. So now it's 34,000 people. Innocent people die because they allowed two leaders that were not supposed to be there, that were taught wrong, lead, lead. The ark of God was captured, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, died. Prophecy fulfilled. If we allow sinners to lead us, the end for them, if they don't repent, is death. It's death. Failure. I don't say it. The Bible says it. Either we strain out, we start obeying God, and we start believing God, or we're going to be in trouble. Knowledge cannot save us, but only obeying God's word. For example, Eli, the priest. A lot of us are, are doing ministry because of knowledge we have, because we know the Bible, but we're not obeying God spiritually. We go to church when we want to. When we have a need, we come to God. It doesn't work like that. If that's happening in somebody's life, that means a demon is leading you. It's not God. Okay? I tell God when I'm going to church and when I'm not. <laughs> Satan is willing to do anything to stop you from going to church. And if you start going to church, he's not going to mind as long as you don't read the Bible. And if you start reading the Bible, he don't mind as long as you don't start obeying the Bible. <laughs> and if you read the Bible, you know, he doesn't want you to witness. You know? If you start obeying the Bible, he doesn't want you to witness. He doesn't want you to multiply yourself. So either way, he's, he's beating us somehow in, in an area. So we have to read. We have to obey. You know, the Bible also here. Read, obey the Bible, and share. Multiply ourselves to be, uh, to be pleasing to the Lord. Knowledge cannot save us, but only obeying God's word. For example, Eli the priest, we have him as an example. Look at verse 12. The same day, a Benjamite ran from the battle line and went to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he arrived, there was Eli sitting on his chair by the side of the road, watching because his heart feared for the ark of God. When the man entered the town and told what had happened, the whole town sent up to cry. Eli heard the outcry and asked, what is the meaning of this uproar? The man hurried up over to, to Eli who was 98 years old and whose eyes had failed so that he could not see. He told Eli, I have just come from the battle line. I fled from it this very day, Eli asked. What happened, my son? The man, the man who brought the news replied, Israel fled before the Philistines and the army has suffered heavy losses. Also, your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God has been captured. When he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell backwards of his chair by the side of the gate. His snake was broken and he died for he was old man and he was heavy and he had led Israel for 40 years. Can you imagine 40 years? I don't know how old were their children. Was his children. But 40 years ministering, 
40 years leading the people, but he didn't lead his children. So whose fault was it that they died? It wasn't the people. It was sin. So you see, God is saying here, the responsibility of the children, it starts with us. It's not in the church. And it's not in the schools. Because a lot of times we want to put the blame on the pastor. We want to put the blame on the church. And the church has nothing to do with it. It's us. that We don't treat them, we don't treat them right. You know? And that's why I said on Sundays, I want the children with us. Because I want them to learn from us to worship God. Not over there where they babysit them. And, and sometimes they don't even teach them. A lot of these teachers, they don't teach them. They just babysit them. I mean, they, they give them toys, whatever. They, 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 not, they grow up thinking church is fun. And it's not a playground. It's a place to worship God, and our children need to learn from it from when they are small. Now they grew up, when someone grew up without us, okay, but next thing, the only thing is God's turn out. The way he can do it is for us to be faithful, to look at our obligations, responsibility, and start fulfilling, start obeying our responsibilities before God. Can you imagine? 40 years? He failed because of this news. And he's saying here, our children are going to be great pain for us. They can cause our death when they grow because they are growing without no God. And especially these last days when the devil and all these demons are very alive around the world, it is dangerous. We're in the last days. Education starts at home again by example, by being a role model again, Proverbs 22, 6. Start, start children off on the way they should go, and when, even when they get old, they will never depart from it. So he clearly says again, he repeats it. If I am a worshiper, I'm, I have to teach my children to worship God. Learn from me, not from somebody else, but from me. If I'm going to be a nice person, they, be obedient to God, he, then our children need to learn from us that how we are. If I, if I want him to, how to treat a woman, his wife, or in the future, whatever, he has to see me treat my wife the right way. Or the husband, whichever, uh, whoever is in charge there. If I'm going to uh, want my, my child to be the best worshiper, to be the best for, for, for God, it starts with me because that's the spirit that's going to go to them. It's a spirit. Can okay, it's called a worldly spirit. So what are we taking home? What kind of spirit are we taking home? We need more than knowledge. We need God's wisdom to guide us in the right way. Reference chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way. I am alive. I am the truth and I am life. When he said that, he was talking about the Bible, remember. When he said that, he was talking about you and me. We are the way to heaven. We are following Christ. They got to follow Christ so they can learn from us, the people, learn from us, the rest of the people, how to worship God, how to share Christ, how to please God. They learn from us, not gossiping, not murmuring, not sinning, not taking God for granted, but fearing God. They're supposed to learn from us. And they're going to the past, I'm going to the past, I'm going to the past, you know, I used to do this, I used to, let that, let that go, that's it doesn't count anymore. What counts is what you did now, what you do now. You know? James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding faults, and it will be given to you. Meaning, you know, if we don't know the way to go. If we don't know what to do. Things are, said, go to God and ask God, what should I do? God, I'm having trouble here. Anyway, for anything, go to God, he says. And it doesn't matter what you have done. He says, he will give it to you. He's not going to say, no, you don't deserve it because you did this. You don't deserve it because of that. He's not going to, he says, he's not going to say nothing. He's going to give it to you. Why? Because he wants you to know him. He wants you closer to him. God, don't, you know, God didn't, did not come to torture us. He came to give us an abundant life. But he said to watch out for the devil because he came to kill, steal, and destroy. He said, but I came to give you life in abundance. And, and I, I didn't tell you only, I went to the cross so you can believe me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so whoever believes in him will never perish but have everlasting life. So he showed us at the cross how much he loves us and, and how much he wants us. But are we willing to obey him? Are we willing to change our, our styles? 
to leave our ways and, and start doing it his way? Are we willing? Because this life is short. But a life after death is eternal. So you decide. You know, you want to enjoy life here and be tormented the rest of your life or take what it comes here and enjoy it with, with Christ and have ease and then after that and enjoy it internally, eternally. So it's up to you. It's up to you. Come to me, he says. All you are heavy, laden, and burning, I will give you rest. He clearly says, if you have troubles, are you confused? Come to me, I will give you rest. He clearly says, but you must learn from me. You must learn from me. You must do things my way so you can have that abundant life, so you can have that peace. Please stand with me. Father God, thank you for the message, Father. Thank you for your words. It's life to us. Help us, help us, Father, to be uh, good listeners to it, but also obedient to your word, Father, and that you be glorified through our lives, Father. Help us to be sensitive to your voice. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but into everlasting life with you. Thank you for forgiving our sins from our past, our present, and our future. Help us to walk, to have a walk that will please you. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, brother.